Oh my, I never thought I'd be making a video about this subject so soon, but another huge incident has occurred where a lot of people have been exposed to germicidal light and it's caused temporary eye damage. So the first time I featured this, not that long ago, was an event in Hong Kong run by a fashion label called Hype Beast, and uh, they had a party where they used germicidal tubes because they didn't realise the harm associated with them as decoration and it caused people eye damage. The exact same thing has happened in Hong Kong again with an event uh, run by the Bored Ape Yacht Club called Ape Fest and once again they've used UVC tubes as I'll show you in the pictures because I think I've deduced what caused it uh, and it's caused people temporary eye damage again. So let me show you why this occurs. I'm going to turn this tube on, I'm going to shield myself from it. You're not exposed to UVC because the camera can't pick it up and your monitor or tablet or phone cannot display on its display. So you'll see that this produces a lovely cyan glow. It's in the dark, it's fantastic, but you cannot look at it because this uh, glow you're seeing is only the visible spectrum from mercury vapour. The strongest wavelength coming out of this tube right now is UVC, actually in several wavelengths, 184 nanometer and 254 nanometer, I can smell ozone off this tube right now. But notice the clear glass tube, that's important, and the little dark bits at the end, because that is important later on. I'm turning this off now. Oh, also notice that you may occasionally see a pattern running back and forth along the tube. Uh, that is caused by the electronic ballast and standing waves within the gas discharge. Have I gone too technical yet? Yes. Anyway, a standard fluorescent tube has the mercury vapour inside. Mercury vapour produces a UVA wavelength, I think that's a UVA there, but it also produces down here lots of uh, strong UVC wavelengths and they're normally converted into visible light by phosphors. It also emits three or more lines, very low level in the visible spectrum, blue, green and orange and that's what gives that lovely turquoisey glow but they are what you'd call minor wavelengths compared to the really serious wavelength which is the UVC. The UVC is converted to visible light. In this case it's actually converted to not just visible light but UVA because this is a insect zapper tube and in the case of this one it's exactly the same phosphor that one uses but this is called black light blue and it's got blue glass that filters out only the desired wavelengths which was the correct tube to use in the application not this one this was the correct tube to use you could even have used this one but not this one but let's take a look and see if we can work out where this occurred so for this I'm going to bring in some pictures that I've found showing the event by people who attended it. Looks like it was a fairly decent event. So here's the main stage. And the first thing that immediately springs to mind is that blue there. But I'm looking at it and there's a LED sign in the middle. I think that's LED strip. LED does not produce UVC wavelengths. Uh, you can get UVC LEDs, but they're very rare and they most certainly don't use them in huge quantities for decorative lighting. These could be They've gone for a very ultraviolet look, but these are all LED lights. The only other thing that comes to mind, well, let me grab one. Just give me a second. A big, fat, uh, 400 watt uh, mercury vapour discharge tube. Now, these tubes actually contain a quartz envelope inside like the UVC one, and they produce a lot of UVC, but it's normally blocked by the outer glass, which is wood's glass. In this case, it's a filter or a variant thereof that only lets this sort of UVA wavelengths through. But um, if the outer sleeves of these get broken, those ones can cause significant eye damage. And that has happened in the past at events where the mercury vapour lamps have been broken but still continue to run inside, putting that wavelength out. I do not see lights in this image that resemble that. I'm just going to put this light away. One moment. Those big UV lamps, they're very inefficient. They don't use phosphor like these ones do. They don't put out anywhere near as much as a decent array of fluorescent tubes. But these days for ultraviolet, they tend to use LEDs and they're operating in the near ultraviolet region. Or in this case, it looks more like they're just mixing red and blue to give a violet effect. Um, certainly all the lights that are visible here don't look a hazard. But let's take a closer look at the DJ plinth, which uh, if we zoom in a bit, very stylish setup. Uh, we shall zoom a little bit closer. It does have tubes in the front. Initially, I thought, could they be ultraviolet tubes? But if you take an even closer look, computer, enhance the image. Oh, before I go there, uh, also these lights here, 
uh, these are all LED fixtures. Very narrow beams, um, or in the case of these little sort of semi-focusable wash lights, they're all LED, they're not going to be the culprits here. And even these lights at the bottom here, they're most likely LED again, and not putting out UVC, so that rules them out. But let's take a closer look at these tubes, and if we do, zoom in that image, we see the tubes and they look like LED tubes to me, because they've got the little end cap with the cable coming out at one end, and if I show you one of these... This tube has been turned round. That's a bit naughty that someone did that because there's a stripe in this. Someone has just played about with that after that's been installed because nobody would leave it like that normally. But um, if you take a look at these tubes, there can you see that slight faint line here? These have an LED strip inside. Uh, there's the cable going at the end and the cap and the other, just like these ones. But the LED is at the back of the tube and you rotate it to match the angle it's going to be pointing. But this shows up as a dark line. It's just the best way to get the diffused output from the front. So you normally rotate these tubes so that line is at the back and it projects light out the front. That line there is most like the LED. You do get fluorescent tubes with a conductive line across them, but kind of rare these days. And I think these are just LED tubes. So that's them ruled out as well. So then, then we look for other pictures of the venue and we find... Uh, interestingly themed toilet area. Let me uh, zoom out. So th these are, this is the area you're supposed to go, for, I guess this isn't the actual toilets. Uh, there wouldn't be much privacy if you were supposed to poo in public. I think they'd be very annoyed if you actually uh, did a poo in one of these toilets. I think they're just decorative. But they've got this ultraviolet theme again and look at these tubes up here. Hmm, that's interesting. Computer, enhance the image. Let's take a closer look at those tubes. Let's get right up close to them. And they look to me like fluorescent fittings. And those look like clear glass tubes with that little gap at the end of the gas discharge that I showed you. And also notice the beading along here, which suggests the tube is clear. And that is the standing wave in the mercury vapour. I reckon, and I can't guarantee it's not 100% guaranteed before I point the finger of blame at people, but uh, I reckon that these are in fact UVC tubes um, because everything tallies up with that. The little uh, tombstone connectors at the end for fluorescent tubes, that dark patch, because with, with phosphor, you'd generally get a glow at the end. It might be darker, but you wouldn't get that really dark void. And also that jelly beaning effect that happens with electronic supplies for discharge tubes. So I reckon that here's the real culprit. It's the toilet area and any other area they use those tubes. And it's so odd that, you know, they had that event, uh, Hype Beast, in Hong Kong. And it's so odd that another event these have turned up. It makes me wonder if while they were installing it, people said, oh, they used these tubes and they were great and they didn't know what had actually happened. And they said, why not use these? Or maybe the same hire company just had some of these tubes from the previous event and just put them back out again, and, well, th the same thing has happened again. So, <clears throat> if you get photokeratosis of your eye, which is what happens, also called welder's eye or arc flash, uh, here's what happens. You wake up in the middle of the night, and it feels like someone's throwing sand in your eyes. Uh, if you've been really exposed to those tubes, you may also have minor sort of sunburn effect of skin irritation. But it's worth mentioning, UVC is one of the shortest wavelengths of ultraviolet. It cannot penetrate deep into the skin. And that also for the same for your eye. It just affects the surface of the eye. And it effectively just basically damages it at a slightly molecular level in the surface. And it will cause intense discomfort. But in most instances, all, of, all the ones I've come across... It passes itself. I have had it from playing about with ultraviolet lights, no less. Uh, and I didn't get it too badly, but I woke up middle of the night and had that sensation. I didn't get it too badly, but it does pass with time. Now, a welder's tip, and I can't give medical advice in this channel. Um, a welder's tip from the previous video, and a lot of welders said this, is that if you suffer arc flash from being exposed to a reflection or a co-worker or your own work that you didn't cover your eyes properly... Uh, Take a potato, slice the potato in half or chop it up and get the juice off the potato with the starch and drip it into your eyes. I can't give that as official medical advice for obvious reasons, but many welders 
tallied up and said, yep, absolutely, we, we do that. And it provides instant relief. But you can also get pain reducing drops from your doctor if that ever happens. But the main thing to know is that it feels terrible when you experience it. It's almost certain that your eyes are going to recover within a day or two and um, there will be no lasting damage. So that's worth knowing. But if you ever go to an event and you see decorative, light, decorative lighting that involves these clear fluorescent tubes with that very pleasing blue glow... Oh, it's so alluring. I'm not looking at it again. Oh, you can't be exposed to this by the phone. I think I mentioned that earlier on. It, the phone can't, uh, the camera can't record actual UVC and your display can't show it. But uh, I can understand why people use these tubes without knowing. But if you ever go to an event, you see these tubes in full public view, and this doesn't apply to neon signs, just the fluorescent tubes, then just be cautious. It might be worth actually leaving that area.